We talked about the ribbon menu in the last unit, but it's such an important part of the interface. I think it's worth just taking a few minutes on going over this again. So I'm going to start off with the menu tabs themselves. This is the full version of Revit that I'm running here. So if we start on the left hand side, we've got the architecture tab and under each tab we have a series of panels. So for architecture, which is obviously going to be the focus of this particular course, we've got a build panel with all our main architectural building elements. So walls, doors, windows, components, columns, floor ceilings, roofs, for example, circulation. So ramps and stairs, railings are included in circulation there. Model, model groups there, model lines and model text. Room and areas, we'll come onto that later in the course. Openings, we can form various openings in different elements, including walls and roofs. Datum for creating levels and grids. Again, we're going to look at that very shortly. And a work plane panel at the end. Structure. Uh, we're not really going to concern ourselves with this particular menu in this course, but just to show you, uh, these are all the tools connected with structural engineering. So again, you can see beam systems, braces, trusses. Um, we've got reinforcement bars and tools for creating those. Systems. Again, this course is particularly focused on Revit architecture and not MEP, but just to show you, this menu here is concerned really with the MEP tools. So electrical systems, um, heating systems, lighting, uh, all the tools you need for that are contained here. Insert menu. Again, we can link other files in or we can import them. And we've got a dedicated unit later in the course to, to look at those and how, how those particular functions work. We can load from library so we can bring additional components families into our project and we can search online at Autodesk's own online library of, of components so we can search there for uh, families we might be looking for and bring them straight into our project. Annotate. This menu contains all the tools you need in order to um, annotate, document and detail your model and your views that you create from that model. Again, towards the end of the course we'll look in detail at all these tools and how they work in practice. Analyze. We can take our model and we can analyze it in a number of different ways. Um, it's structural performance, it's thermal performance. Uh, so all the tools you need to do that are contained on this menu. Massing and site. Revit, or the full version of Revit, contains a number of massing tools for creating massing studies. There on the left hand side of this menu and on the middle and towards the right hand side we've got a number of tools for creating a topography or a, a context for our building to sit in so we can create a topo surface. We can add site components to that and we can manipulate that site surface in a number of different ways with these tools on the right hand side. The collaborate menu, when we work with others using Revit uh, we use a process called work sharing so we've got tools to enable that function to take place. We can also uh, do some basic coordination reviews, um, we can copy and monitor so we've got a dedicated course on that coming up later. The view menu here we can create new views, so sections, callouts, elevations, plan views, ceiling views. Um, um, later on in the course I'll show you how to create each of those in turn. The manage menu, that deals with day-to-day -day settings in your project, so materials, snap settings, basic project information, line weights, line styles, uh, phases, which we'll cover later on in the course, that's all contained here. Add-ins. In the last unit we talked about the app exchange, how we can add additional functionality to the full version of Revit. When you have downloaded some additional plugins, they will appear here. They will fill this space in depending on what you've downloaded and installed. 
modify last menu here everything you need in order to edit and manipulate the elements that you've put into your design so we can move rotate copy split um, all those different elements and I'll show you one by one how all these tools work later on in the course the ribbon menu contains a number of panels under each menu tab so for example as we've just seen I click on architecture I'm presented with a number of different panels specific to this particular menu tab here so again I switch to structure and I see a different set of panels so as we go through the course when I refer to menu tabs or menu items I'm referring to the tabs at the top here and when I refer to a particular panel you're looking for the panel name at the bottom here now the panels themselves this is the default order that the panels are presented in you can if you click and hold with your left mouse button you can pick a panel up and you can reorder these you can see now the build panel is the second in line I take the circulation panel stick it back in there it's totally up to you whether you reorder these to best suit how you work I would strongly suggest when you are starting out with Revit and you're getting used to the system to just leave them in the default order that they come in the reason for that is in my opinion they're very well um, ordered to match a typical workflow so you can imagine if you're a, an architect or a building designer you're going to be really interested in these primary building elements here so the menu item for architecture is at the front of the queue there on the left and the first panel you come to is the build panel and to my mind there seems to be a logical sequence to how these are ordered so it's totally up to you if you want to reorder them um, but for now certainly for this course I would strongly suggest you just leave them in their default positions you'll notice that some of the panel titles have a little black triangle that gives you access to some basic settings for that particular panel and the tools it contains each panel contains a number of different tools so for example on this architecture menu we look at the build panel we can see these various tools for putting or creating our primary building elements so walls doors windows components etc you'll notice that some of the tools again have a little black downward facing arrow or triangle if you click on the triangle you will see associated tools connected with that primary tool that's on display so again if I do that for column I can access to structural column and architectural column for each tool if you hover over the icon you will see a short description and a little graphic of what the tool does notice at the top of that panel there where it says wall in brackets you've got WA so you've got the keyboard shortcuts for all the tools displayed just by hovering over the tool in question so you can see there DR for door and so forth we mentioned the quick access toolbar in the last unit but I'll just quickly go over that again so this is the quick access toolbar here this narrow band just below the panels you can have it docked beneath the ribbon or if you hit that little uh, drop down menu there and go to the bottom here you can show it above the ribbon you can see now it's jumped up here I'll just bring it back down again show below the ribbon and remember if you want to add any of these tools to that quick access toolbar it's just a case of right clicking on the tool in question and add to quick access toolbar click there and you can see curtain grid has now been added to the quick access toolbar 
activate that little drop down menu at the end customize quick access toolbar here you can reorder it you can put breaks in it here you can see the little gray lines so you really can customize that to suit how you work as you progress through the course and you get more used to working with Revit you'll start to really appreciate how valuable this screen real estate is down here and you can see that the ribbon menu and the quick access toolbar take up approximately I'm saying 20 to 25 percent of the top of our screen here as you start to get more comfortable with Revit and you start to learn where these different tools are either you've added them to the quick access toolbar you use keyboard shortcuts or you just get used to what tools are on what panels you can actually minimize or collapse some of this uh, this screen here to give you more room in which to produce your model if you look at the right hand side of the menu tabs a little button here so before I press that if we look what we've got at the moment we've got all the menu tabs shown and whichever menu tab we've got active we can see all the panels and the panel names if I click on this little button over to the right hand side what it's done now is collapsed the ribbon to a certain extent so we can still see all the menu tabs and now what we can see are all the panels with a panel name and the panel icon and as I hover my cursor over each one I can actually see the full extent of the panel and the tools if I click that button again now I get the top level menu tabs and the panel names but I don't get a, an icon for each panel but again if I hover over I've got access to all the tools and finally if I click that again all I get now by default is the top level menu tabs shown and I need to actually click on there to bring those up to let me choose what tool I want to work with so you can see now by doing so that's greatly increased the screen real estate for all this other information one more click of that button brings it full circle back where we started so say as you get more used to Revit you may want to experiment with collapsing some of that in order to give you more area to work with your model Pretty soon in the course we're going to start looking at these tools and how they actually work to create 3D elements. But what I want to show you right now is how you actually cancel a command or tool should you change your mind. So for example, let's hit the wall command. Now we are going to be looking at this in a lot of detail later on in the course, but I, for now I just want to show you how we'd actually cancel out of this. So now Revit is expecting us to go ahead and start defining a wall. If we want to cancel out of that, my two choices are A, I can press the escape key on my keyboard or B, I can press that modify button there and it literally cancels out of the current command. I must admit I find that very strange how that's been labelled modify. Um, it doesn't really modify an element. It, it, I think it would be better uh, if that was called cancel because what it does is put Revit back in the default state where no tool is active and nothing is selected so just to do that again let's say door if I was in a door command here Revit is now expecting me to go ahead and place a door if I want to cancel out of that just hit modify the door command is put away and we're back in the default state If you're working with the full version of Revit, you essentially have Revit Architecture, Revit Structure and Revit MEP all built into the same software package. 
If you're an architect or a building designer, you may not be interested in Revit Structure or Revit MEP, and you may want to simplify the ribbon menu up here to just show the tools that you need to use. To do so, you need to go to the application menu. Remember, that's the big R in the top left hand corner. If we click on that and you look towards the bottom of that panel, there's a button there for options. And you go to the second item on the list, user interface. And there you can see a series of tick boxes. If I just move that down, which broadly align with what you're seeing along the top here in terms of menu panels and tools. And you can simply check or uncheck the items that you're interested in. So if you don't need MEP tools, systems tab, piping tools, piping analysis, you can simply untick that and you can greatly simplify the interface to suit whatever discipline you're working in. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.